uh, is back by popular demand, uh, Wesley and Cash. I was only planning to do three sermons in this series, but there was just an overwhelming positive response. And Johnny Cash has got a lot of songs, and there's a lot of stories about John Wesley. So this is, uh, this is great. I'm glad that you're enjoying it. And so we're going to have one more today and then one more next week. Um, and I keep, people keep giving me suggestions for more. So, but that's it for now. We'll just do the five. But nonetheless, today's song is Ring of Fire. Now, this is not actually a song Johnny Cash wrote. Uh, it was written by June Carter Cash and by Merle Kilgore. And it was originally recorded by June's sister, Anita, but it never really hit the charts and did much. And so Johnny Cash had this dream of adding some horns to the song and to re, uh, record it, which he did in 1963. And it became the biggest hit of his career. It was number one for seven weeks back in 1963. And although Ring of Fire kind of sounds like this ominous idea, it's actually a term that refers to falling in love, which is what June Carter was experiencing with Johnny Cash at the time that she wrote the song. Now, June worked with Merle Kilgore, the other songwriter, on writing the song just based on a phrase that she had written down in her journal. This is what she wrote. There is no way to be in that kind of hell, no way to extinguish a flame that burns, burns, burns. And so uh, Johnny Cash's daughter, Roseanne, once said that the song is about the transformative power of love. Isn't that awesome? And she said, that is what it's always meant to me, and that is what it'll always mean to the Cash family. So with that, we're going to perform Ring of Fire. Love is a burning thing And it makes a fiery ring Bound by wild desire I fell into a ring of fire I fell into a burning ring of fire I went down, down, down And the flame went higher And it burns, burns, burns In the ring of fire In the ring of fire For you like a child. Oh, but the fire went wild. I fell into a burning ring of fire. I went down, 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 and the flames went higher. And it burns, burns, burns in a ring of fire. I fell into a burning ring of fire. I went down, 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 and the flames went higher. And it burns, burns, burns. A ring of fire, the ring of fire. And it burns, burns, burns. The ring of fire, the ring of fire, the ring of fire. Fire. 
So last Sunday, I wasn't here. I wasn't taking a Sunday off or uh, just loafing. I actually went with the confirmation class, the adult sponsors and the youth, and we went to visit another church that's part of our United Methodist Connection. Um, it's called Asbury Mount Olive, and it's in Topeka. It's a mainly African-American congregation. They had this awesome gospel choir, and the preacher got all worked up. The service was a good hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes, and it just flew by. It really did. It was a lot of fun. It was a totally different experience. And what I was telling the youth is United Methodism is a big, diverse body of Christ. We have Korean churches, Hispanic churches, Native American churches, and we have black churches that, that worship the same God but use different music and different ways of worshiping. And it was just, it was a cool experience, and they were very welcoming to us. Now, the pastor got pretty worked up, and he was getting lots of amens from the congregations. I kind of like that, so... I encourage you to do that. But at one point, he, he, at one point he started jumping on the chairs behind him. Um, and he was talking about Jesus rising from the dead. And he rose up on the chair. And the youth asked me if I would do that. <laughs> yeah, amen. <laughs> uh, I'm not making any promises. <laughs> we'll see if the spirit hits me. I don't know. But anyway, with that, why don't we have a word of prayer? <clears throat> Holy One, we've gathered once more eagerly awaiting your word for each one of us. May our minds be open to learn, our hearts willing to change, and our hands ready to serve. Amen. For John Wesley, fire was a central symbol of his life and of his ministry and his calling to revive the Church of England. Now, as the story goes, back in 1709, there was a fire that started on the roof of the parsonage. His father was a pastor, and someone started the parsonage on fire. They're pretty sure it was arson. Now, everyone got out of the house safely, except for a little five-year-old boy, little Johnny. His father, Samuel, tried to run up the stairs to get him, but the stairs were on fire, and so he couldn't go up. And the story is, is that he fell to his knees, and he prayed to God, Lord, my son is in your hands, your will be done. A little Johnny woke up in his bedroom all alone, and he opened the door to the hallway, and it was engulfed in flames. And so he shut the door, and he ran across his room, and he climbed up uh, some drawers and tried to open the window. And there was a man outside so seeing Johnny try to open the window and get out. But the thing was is that the, the fire was all over the roof, and it was very dangerous. And there wasn't enough time to get a ladder, and so one of the men got another man on top of him, and they went over, and they pulled little Johnny out of the window, and the house collapsed. That's the way the story goes. It makes a good story, though, doesn't it? Now, it, they said that he ran to his mother, Susanna's arms, ran to his mom, and his mom said, You are like a brand that's plucked from the burning. Truly, God has saved you for some great purpose. So for John Wesley, this story, a true story about his childhood, became the story of salvation, the story of his ministry. He was saved from the burning so that he could save others. John saw the world as a house on fire and people needed to be rescued. And God sent him, it was his calling, his purpose, he was born to do that, to go out and to save people. John Wesley famously said, I have nothing to do but save souls. And God's redeeming love and grace was the main theme that John Wesley preached about. And he was a powerful preacher. He could draw thousands and thousands of people to listen to him speak outdoors. And Wesley explained it this way. If you catch on fire with enthusiasm, people will come from miles around to watch you burn. You see how fire was a big part of John Wesley's ministry? That symbol really comes back over and over again. And fueled by his passionate preaching, the Methodist movement spread across the land like a fire on the prairie. And we know what that looks like, don't we? Now, it wasn't always easy. You know, we look back in history and think, wow, this, this movement just took off, and he was so blessed and anointed by God. But actually, there were quite a few obstacles and difficulties along the way. John Wesley was met with resistance and sabotage by other preachers who were jealous of his success, and also by the authorities in the Church of England who were threatened by John Wesley. He would often be confronted by angry mobs who were paid by the wealthy elite who did not want Wesley to organize and help the poor and the oppressed in England. But the thing is, John Wesley didn't let threats and violence stop him. 
He knew what he was called to do. And he embodied the truth that we just heard read by Kendra from the second letter to Timothy, where it is written, God did not give us a spirit of fear, but rather a spirit of power and of love. John Wesley embodied that. John Wesley was willing to suffer for what he believed in. He was willing to die for what he cared about. And sometimes loving very passionately can cause us pain and suffering. And that's what the song Ring of Fire is all about. It says, love is a burning thing, and it makes a fiery ring bound by wild desire. I fell into a ring of fire. I fell into a burning ring of fire, and I went down, down, down. The flames went higher, and it burns, burns, burns. The ring of fire, the ring of fire. When June Cash wrote that song, she was trying to capture the pain she was experiencing in passionately loving Johnny Cash. And passion is the word. That is the key word here. In fact, it's the perfect word. The English word passion comes from the Greek word pathos, which is a verb that means to suffer. It's, that's the root of it. To really love something, to really care deeply about something, is to suffer for. And we know that Jesus suffered and died for us. Because he loves us. We are his loved ones. He demonstrated his passion for us by dying. That's why we refer to what happened that day, the whipping, the beating, the crucifixion. We call that whole thing the passion of the Christ, right? It's because passion is about being willing to suffer and die for what you love. Jesus even said, no one has greater love than this, than to lay down one's life for one's friends. That is passion. John Wesley preached with passion about Jesus. Johnny Cash sang with passion about love. And both of them drew in huge crowds of people. Because if you catch on fire with enthusiasm, people will come from miles around to watch you burn. Passion is contagious, amen? amen. Passion is exciting and energizing, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. A little shaky there. All right, where was it? Uh, but passion, passion is the real deal, right? Passion is authentic. You can't fake passion. It's exciting. You want to be around someone who's passionate. Passion is this deep commitment. It's being all in. It's giving everything you have. Passion is sacrifice. And passion is being willing to suffer. And passion is the only way that we can follow Jesus Christ. Amen.